everyone to a room to bloom this is Marlene again so this is my second video today um, I just wanted to kind of get back on here and now it's evening so the lighting is probably a little less great than it was before but we're just gonna roll with it um, the topic I wanted to talk about tonight is something called the void it's it's um, the spiritual void this is something you experience after you you go through a dark night of the soul. <clears throat> you have all these experiences. You're just moving through some heavy stuff, releasing, processing, letting go. <clears throat> and then it's like you land in this place which feels like a bubble, right? And... Um, it's funny because I've been wanting to do a video on this and then this morning something came up where somebody did it and it was it was just kind of that little push yeah just just do the video um it's, it was different you know I agree with everything she said but the way that I'm kind of coming at this is a little bit different so well, I would say it's different <laughs> but you know so this is how I want to explain to you how the void feels. Um, so first of all, I would like to explain the the dark night of the soul, which is you know moving without getting into great detail. Okay, so I'm just, just it's this difficult, very difficult time in your life where you you know could be that you are losing things um, that you've had you know health things going on, um, trauma, whatever, you know, you've had these big things happen and your life is changing and you, you are going through some struggles with all of this, right? And through these struggles, there's, you're losing things, um, not misplacing, but like you might lose a job, right? A relationship might fall apart, like different things like that, right? So it's, it's, it's difficult and that's why they call it the dark night of the soul. But in other words, it is really called, you know, can be called the dark night of the, the, the releasing of the ego, right? Because we all like to be strong and hold ourselves up and get through everything and we can do this, right? And when, um, it's kind of like getting knocked down a peg or two or, you know, a lot, right? So, um so that we become humbled again, right? Um, and the ego is this thing that we build up that's really like a mask. It's like a false mask that we wear. Our, e our ego is like a shield we um, put on or cover up that covers up who we truly are, right? Um, and we don't necessarily even do it intentionally, but it is what happens, right? Um, so we go through this dark night of the soul. Now my, my, um, vision for that dark night of the soul, imagine putting something in the washing machine and it's like big and heavy and bulky, right? So whether that's like a blanket or a rug or, the, you know, <laughs> winter jackets, big jackets, whatever it is, right? And so it's washing and this is like what's happening to you. You're kind of getting washed of all this stuff, right? But now the water <laughs> the water comes in and the and the stuff is spinning, which you will feel like you're spinning out of control, right? Now the um you you feel like your life is spinning <laughs> out of control. And so then it's like the weight can get shifted in the machine. And so it's like it's not just like, oh, I feel like my life is spinning out of control. It is like a hard, yeah, your life is spinning out of control. In fact, it's spinning so hard that now we're just going to make the whole machine move, right? It's like, thunk, 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 and this thing, you know, your washing machine is like dancing around your laundry room, or at least moving, and depending upon how much stuff is in it, and you are the metaphorical uh, machine, right? And all of your emotions are the stuff that's in it, um, is how hard that might move. Now, if you are fighting it, if you are really fighting, like the releasing of things or situations or people or work, right? That's where this 
thumping will come in. You're not just spinning and you know getting cleaned up. It is like, okay, fighting is at every step of the way, right? So thunk, thunk, thunk. It's like it draws your attention to the fact that, okay, <laughs> you know, you're not settling down. You're not taking it seriously. You're not sitting with what needs to come up and get processed, right? You keep fighting it. So this is what, and this is, this is kind of that metaphorical um, picture, I think, that I can give you about our dark night of the soul. So when you're going through that, you really don't want to fight with it. You want to work with it. You want to go with the flow of it. If you're having emotions, come out, move through them, cry, release, yell if you need to. But, you know, get it out of you, right? And then, um, <laughs> you know, and then um, get back to your center. Um, because if you keep stuffing them, you'll actually have physical um, physical ailments. Uh, your dis-ease or discomfort that you're feeling um, will manifest through the body in the form of disease if you don't deal with the emotions. So this is what this is about, getting you to deal with the emotions. Any past pains, traumas, hurts, um, things you've had that... You know, you might not have even thought about like for years, but the, when you get quiet, it's like your past. When you sit still long enough and you're not creating more and, and you're sitting still, your past kind of walks up to you and starts saying, hey, remember me? I'm that um, thing that, um, I'm that thing that that person said to you in whatever grade that you've carried with you your whole life and you felt bad about, right? Um, I'm that first employer who fired you uh, because of this, that, or the other thing, right? And so all these things start creeping up to, on you to help you um, tap into who you really are when you're not your ego, to learn how to forgive yourself and others. And so, there, you know, there's a lot of work. This dark night of the soul can... Um, be a very long process for some it can be a faster process for others so it depends like i said what's in the washing machine right um anyway so let's just say you've kind of moved in through this dark night of the soul you're starting to function again okay so <laughs> some people might say it's like a, a midlife crisis but you know a serious one right so let's just say you're starting to function again but now you you have to go on the drive, right? You're cleaned up, right? You've cleaned up, you've purged the emotions, you've released stuff, anger, <laughs> anger, regret, fear, shame, guilt, all of this stuff. It's, it's purged, right? And so now, you, but you still got to go on the dryer, right? So the void is like being in the dryer. It's like, or it can feel like that. Like, you're tumbling around not really sure where you go from here, right? Because you are not the same person that you were before the dark night of the soul. You're just not the same anymore. Things have shifted. You have shifted, okay? So you're in the dryer. <laughs> it's like, um, this is what it feels like. So let's say that part of your spinoff with your dark night of the soul was that you lost your job, right? After so many years and it's all you knew. So you were hanging on to that persona or who, who the story, your story, really tight, right? So now you've had to release the story. But now you're like, okay, well, if I'm not that, if I'm not the person, if I don't create my identity by what I did, who am I then? And so this avoid is like, now you're trying to go, hmm, who am I when I am not that? Who am I without certain people? Who am I without the pain, right, that was suppressing me, pulling me down, even though I didn't know it in the beginning, right? But who am I? Who am I? And so this, the void, <laughs> um, that's what it can feel like. You're you're in the dryer, you're, you're, and um, it's also like, okay. So say you make a pot of spaghetti noodles, right? 
what do a lot of people do? They take the noodle and they throw it on the wall and that's to see if it sticks, right? Now imagine you're making pasta. Every, pasta's your life, right? Every single day, right? Noodles will not stick and the noodles are basically you are no longer like this hard abrasive person. You've become, you've softened, right? You have softened. You've become um, more considerate, more caring, less judgmental. You've started, because you started to release that, hey, everybody has their own journey. And even though mine wasn't like, it was just whatever it was, right? And you moved through it, but now you've softened. And so, so you've got these like noodles and you're, and you're like, but nothing's sticking. So now let's say that you're out and you're applying for work <clears throat> and, and you're, and you're having all these experiences. Now, this is what happened with me, I, you know, so I'm pulling this from my own experience. So I had all these experiences where it's like I would apply for work because life takes major shifts, you, you know. And so I'm out applying for work, and I had the, the most interesting experiences while I was doing that. But bottom line, it can be a whole lot of no's, right? Um. But, but, so, so this is also a part of the, okay, she's been through the dark night of the soul, but she, like, she still maybe has a bit of an ego, or maybe she's, she's at the, she's at the, not quite out of the dark night of the soul, but she's still got a little bit more to go, right? So, so we see that she still doesn't need, that she still needs time to sit still, right? Not ready to go back to even though she wants to, right? Not 100% ready. So we're not going to give her a job yet. Not just a job, because that's the other thing. Now we've shifted. We don't, it's not that we are any longer falling into just a job. We're here to discover our soul's purpose, to lean into it, to work with it for the ourself and for the greater good of all humanity. So when you have been doing a job, and even though your 30-year career, right, it was a career, it was a job, and at 30 years, oftentimes people are like, yeah, I'm, you know, because now you're starting to look at retirement, right? You, you, you've kind of been there, done that. But, but you, you're just doing it now, right? It's not like you have this great passion. You might be good at it. But not, you're not as in love with it as when you started. So now you, in this void area, it's kind of like, well, now you start feeling bad. Why am I not getting a job, right? What, there's this saying that says, their rejection is God's protection. And this is to help you get to your true soul's purpose. So... It might take some time to get you to sit down and say, you know what? Maybe it's because I I uh, really want to write songs. I want to, you know, play the music. Like it gets you thinking about the garage band you used to have at age 15, which was the best thing in your life. And then you started high school and had to get serious with your grades, go to college, right? So, so you did all that, but... All of a sudden, you start digging into one. What did I used to like as a kid that made me feel free? I didn't have responsibilities, but I was. I not only did did I enjoy it, I was really good at it, and it could be beneficial to help others uh, to raise the vibration of humanity, right? And so, all of a sudden, these things start coming up to. They. They come into your awareness again, let's just put it that way. Just like the emotions kind of boil up, so do the things that you love to do, or are loved to do, or so do the things, your interests that maybe you had interest in, but never had the time to do it. So now this is where it's like, nope, we're not going to ever work yet because we want her to experience this or experience that. Um... And then, so that's, 
that's one way to describe this. Now, another way to describe it is imagine yourself on a boat and there's, there's not another boat around, there's no one around. So you're kind of like, it's, it's, it's really quiet, right? So life becomes very quiet, uh, meaning you're not getting as many phone calls. Uh, because you've been going through so much, you're not necessarily maybe reaching out as much. And if you are, you're not connecting because like energy attracts like energy. It's not, I'm not saying you don't connect with everyone, but now you've kind of done the cleaning cycle, right? So your vibration is starting to rise. And so for others who may not have been on this journey, their vibration might be here because they're still living the life that's, right, creating all this chaos, right? So, so you don't align as much. But if you come down a little bit and they have a really good day and rise up, then, you know, then you might be able to connect, right? So it can be, feel, it, that void can feel a bit like that. Um, the other thing that the void does is it teaches you extreme patience um, and surrender. So you start to realize that um, this is big. You learn that in the... Um, dark night of the soul at some point, <laughs> um, that, you know, you are being guided, that uh, God, source, energy, the universe is here, right? Very present, and you're very aware of that. But you begin to learn an extreme patience, and you start to say, okay, this is all happening to me, which when you're in the dark night of the soul, it feels like everything is happening to you. You start to learn that it is happening for you to help you find your soul's purpose. And so, um, you know, you, you learn patience. You become uh, more quiet, more tolerant, more forgiving, uh, ju judgmental, you know, less judgmental. So, so this is what's happening in the void. Um, feeling you... You feel more. It's not just because you went through the dark night of the soul that all of your emotions are done. That's it. I'm never going to feel again. No, you still feel because in the void when it's really quiet and you're trying to reach people, you're like, well, what's going on? Why can't I reach people, right? Um, and that's where it feels like you're in this dryer and you're like, you're, it's kind of like grasping at straws, right? <laughs> or, or trying to hold yourself still so everything makes sense again. That's that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make sense of what feels out of your control. And the truth is, is it is like essentially like it it's bigger. It's it's like you learn to kind of be more of an observer and watch what's happening in your life and yet you can still participate in it. But when you're participating, now you're still, now you become an observer in your own participation, right? So that can be um, an interesting concept. But patience is, oh, I want to say what you're forced to learn. Um, it's just part of this, like really becoming patient. And gratitude is, you know, Gratitude is here, you you know, your gratitude, it's just expanding and expanding and appreciation of nature and seeing more clearly or noticing things more that were always there, always there, but you just never saw them before because you were so busy running, right? And now that you've cleaned up, released, processed, slowed down, you can start to see things. And so life becomes slower. And when it's slower like that, it's it's hard to miss, right? All the beauty, the wonder. And it's also about seeing the beauty in um, seeing the beauty in 
situations that normally you would have thought this this isn't beautiful this isn't right and, and the judgment goes up right so so your old self would have thrown out a lot of judgment and whatever but now you begin to see the beauty in everything that is because you recognize the light you recognize um, the, the dark and that they both need to play an integral part so that you know what one or the other is you learn about balancing um, I have another note here it was about Oh yeah, so when you're in this place and you're calm, um, you can be calm and have like many emotions come up and you're like, what's going on here? Well, this can all be tied to the moon phases, the planetary phases, what's going on energetically, cosmic energetically, so that this is because it's the saying, as above, so below. So what's going on in the um, cosmos is, you know, going on in our planet, is going on in our community, is going on in our city, our neighborhood, ourself. Um, and so it's very, very, very fascinating when you start to look at that stuff. And when you don't have an answer for, like some say, you know, usually if something happens and you feel upset, you can you can immediately recognize that, right? But if nothing happened and you're just like, what is going on with me, right? So these are the things that you want to look into. So it's like sitting still and this storm, it's like an electromagnetic storm, right, is moving through you and processing, bringing up more stuff to process that you thought you let it all go, um, but there is still stuff to process, right? There is a saying that if you can tell your story without crying, then you have healed from it. And so if you have some, um, some pains from the past, and if you start to talk to someone about it, and the tears come, and the emotions come, even though you've done a lot of work with it, there's more to do. And many times it takes many revisits back to the same, a same topic to finally get that completely purged and out of your system. But once you do, wow, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, jumping hurdles, right? So, um, I did want to step back again. I, I think I mentioned this one just as a verification. So when we're doing going through the dark night of the soul, how do we get there? Again, it can be from pain, brokenness, exhaustion, abandonment, trauma, injury, accidents, um, illness. So there's many, many different ways that this dark night of the soul can start. Like I said, job loss, just really big things in your life. It can be loss of a a loved one, right? Um, so different, different things like that. Um, the other thing, when you are in that, the things that you can feel is you could feel confused. You can feel very confused about why all of this is happening. So you maybe aren't going to feel confused on the first one. You might feel like frustrated. You might feel angry, right? Um, but as things continue to happen and, and it feels like it doesn't make sense, then one of the other things, then you, the confusion starts coming in and you start to feel rejected. You can feel rejected and through that rejection you can feel very lonely. So this is what's happening is our ego is like an onion, right? And we're peeling back these layers of this hard shell that we've put up to get to the true self, which is within, right? The light within that we carry. Uh, but sometimes we can go through life not feeling that light, or even if we do feel light, um, sometimes it can be the false self. That's another name for the ego, is the false self, right? So it's like getting down to the tr our true essence, not our false essence or our mask. 
Um, so when we are also, so that's like in the beginning of that dark night of the soul, you know, the confusion, loneliness, rejection. Then when we start settling into it and we start doing the work, that's why I said we can, we actually start to withdraw. Um, because either we don't have the energy, because doing this work takes a lot of energy, right? So it might be because we don't have the energy. Or we don't want to always talk about our stuff with someone else. We, we recognize that we're going in with a lot. And we start to realize that, we, yeah, we have stuff to move through, and we would rather do that. Um, not always with somebody, you know, some of this, much of this work is really alone. It's work we just have to move through alone. Um, but we do that work in multiple ways. We do it mentally, so we're releasing stuff mentally. Physically, we might start purging um, or shifting the way that we ate. Um, because we don't want to feel as heavy and or lethargic. And because this, this healing takes work, you can very much feel like that. And then you start thinking, well, is it my diet? Yes, the diet can absolutely make a big difference. And then um, we do work spiritually, too, because the you know this is a mind-body-soul connection, all of this. And so um, we are spirits that are having a human experience versus humans that are having a spiritual experience. And so when we get to that, we realize, yeah, spirituality is a big thing about this. Um, and so, let me see, I'm sorry, I have one more note here I wanted to work at. So one of the, then the next step after that is after you've started to settling into accepting it and doing the work and processing and you know working on your mental state your physical state your spiritual state right now then you can get to this place where it's like you know i kind of realize that it's um comfortable here like my life isn't as chaotic i'm not dealing with i've healed a lot of my own you know inner turmoil I'm not dealing with everybody else's turmoil because you can feel, you can begin to feel when you step out of the home, you start to feel what's going on energetically, right? And so you can get really comfortable. It's kind of like the nest, right? It's now the void is like the nest. So imagine that you are like, if you imagine that you are in an egg and and you then being kept warm right and that's a comfortable place to be um the dark night of the soul might have been like trying to crack the egg and come out of the egg but now you're still in the nest and so that's what this void is more like you're still being kept warm um and it's really comfortable and when you stick your head out it's like oh there's a lot going on out there, not quite ready for that, right? So you settle back into um, the nest or the void. So then um, this is really like the place in between legs. So this is where we're at. And the way that I like to describe it is if you took the number eight and you turned it on its sign, like it's an infinity symbol, right? So the place that it meets in the middle, this is the void. My vision of this is that each circle on the eight would be a pregnancy, right? So in one end, you're re leaving, releasing an old life that you have lived, right? And now in now you come to this place in the center, the void, right? So that you can figure out who you really are, what your soul's purpose is, 
right? What are you doing here? All these bigger questions. So it's this quiet place in the void and between. And then you are birthed again into this other. It's like, you know, I think of it as a pregnancy, right? So it's, it's, it's really quite fascinating um, to look at it like that. But Anyway, so this, this is an idea of what the void is like, and I'm sure there's more, and I'll probably do another topic, but just, or another video, excuse me, but <laughs> it does give you an idea of what it can feel like, and when life gets quiet, like, how do we work through that? How do we begin to get out of, like, the nest of the void, right? And so it's, it's like choosing, we have to consciously choose to start to take steps in the direction of our new life and what that looks like and what we want it to be and what is our soul's purpose and are we helping um, the greater good, right? So um, very cool. Anyway, I want to say thanks for joining me. I hope you have a good night. Bye.